So Randy Satchel dropped this off this dreadnought guitar to get it kind of ultra tweaked. It needed several things and I'll go over all that in a minute. But, so now that all the work has been done I want to start by doing the whole cross-sectional tuning check and you can pick up your own guitar at home and try this. This is the check that determines how accurate your guitar is across the entire span of the neck. Note to note, chord to chord, fret to fret, string to string. Okay, so we go open string, 12th fret, 7th fret, it's octave, and finally open string and 1st fret. So you're going to do that all the way across, here's the 5th string. So I'm starting here at the bridge saddle to show you, if you look closely, this is the original saddle, this is the replacement saddle. You can see on the original saddle that the crown of the saddle, with the exception of the B string, has all of the strings canted to the very leading edge. And the reason for that is because all of those 12 fret notes were flat in relation to the open string. So in order to correct that, I made a cantilevered compensated saddle that reaches beyond the confines of the routered slot in the bridge to move the strings forward so that they intonate all the way across. And that's one of several reasons that this guitar now intonates perfectly. Let's go to the other end, have a look at the nut. All of the guitar nuts are designed to bring the string as far forward as possible and that's what was done with this nut. But it wasn't enough. When I calibrate an instrument, I take multiple things into consideration. The string gauge, the action of the string, the fret scale, and the tuning. In the case of this guitar of Randy's, it's just standard pitch, right? It's concert pitch or regular tuning, EADGB. On the compensated nut, all of the strings, just like the bridge saddle, all of the strings are actually reaching forward beyond the confines of the end of the fingerboard. When you look closely, you can see that each string is in a different place. You can see the relief cut here on the A is brought back quite a bit further than the D and G string. So there isn't one of these six strings that's actually right on the edge of the original nut. They all reach a little bit, not very much, but just a few thou, the two outside ones, beyond the reach of the original nut. And you can see it's kind of an elliptical curve where the B, G, and D strings especially reach quite a bit beyond the end of the fingerboard. The cantilevered compensated bridge saddle that you just saw and this compensated nut in combination with a fret dress and lowering the action were several of the things that were done to help this guitar to play precisely in tune across the entire span of the neck. In order to lower the action down to where it should be, this intersection where the neck joins the body, where the dovetail is received into the block, right at the 14th fret, was sitting quite proud. And I leveled that out, recrowned and polished. So now you can play all the way up the neck without getting any buzzing or rattling. And finally, the edges of the frets were also dressed and polished. So this is not something that Randy's got to get done once a year. This is done once, and as long as he sticks to this gauge of string, he's good for the long haul. Now I should mention too that all the wires for the Fishman system were all tangled inside, so I sort of deciphered those, untangled them, put in a few retention clips and pulled those wires up out of the way. The other thing I did was the battery, the 9 volt battery, was just stuck to the back of the guitar. Well, it's not the best place for it, and I know it's easy access through the sound hole, but really, when you're changing strings, you can change your battery. Now the battery is relocated 
to the edge of the head block. So the head block is the big thick mahogany block that receives the dovetail that holds the neck to the body. On the edge of that block there's a very strong velcro tape that's taped to the edge of that head block. It rests on that ledge. Now the nice thing about this is you have gravity working for you. I did talk to Randy about this so that you don't have to worry about the thing kind of rattling loose and flopping around inside the guitar. One last thing I did, I have shown this in other videos but I want to bring you in for a close look. Even though the input jack has a cuff on it that people put their guitar straps on and anybody who's had a system like this will agree with that it's only a matter of time before it loosens up and then you end up tightening it and then if you don't tighten it properly you twist the wires off inside and it's a whole can of worms that you don't want to deal with. So my solution, and I've done this for the last 30 years, is put a second strap button. Now this strap button is used only for the strap. So there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, as I just mentioned, this doesn't loosen off. And the second reason is your leather strap with the cord going through like that, this button really acts as a strain relief. You know, if you're walking around on stage or someone else steps on your cord or you step on your cord yourself, the jack never gets a hit. And I think that pretty well wraps it up with this one. Of course, I put a fresh 9-volt uh, battery in there, so Randy's good to go. I know he had a show coming up in early July. He'll be up and ready, and he can just relax and play the guitar and not even think about tuning. <laughs> for your guitar is to play the same chord in different positions. There's your garden variety D chord. And that F sharp is actually in tune. First position D chord. Do the same with the G chord. 